So for this week's uh, Challenge Wednesday question, we have our patient Taylor, and Taylor is attending her first follow-up PT appointment to address her right supraspinatus calcific tendonitis. Her plan of care mentions the use of iontophoresis with acetic acid. However, the parameters are not specified. Which of the following is the most appropriate action of the PTA under general supervision? All right, so we got A, whole PT treatment. B is perform iontophoresis using clinical judgment and patient tolerance. C is continue with the plan of care, but hold the use of iontophoresis. And D is to continue with the plan of care uh, with uh, an iontophoresis dosage of 10 milliamp minutes. All right, so we need to go ahead, start crushing this, knocking this puppy out. So let's go ahead and start off at the top. We see Taylor is attending her first follow-up PT appointment. Cool. Nothing major there, right? Where She's there to address her right supraspinatus calcific tendonitis. Not a lot is really jumping out at me in this first sentence. However, I am keeping in the back of my mind that she does have that right supraspinatus calcific tendonitis. All right? So that's important. Now, as we continue down the line, it says her plan of care mentions the use of iontophoresis with acetic acid. However, the parameters are not specified. All right, so let's go ahead and break that up into a couple different pieces. So we got her plan of care mentions the use of iontophoresis with acetic acid. I, you know what, I like that because I know iontophoresis with acetic acid can be used for uh, calcific tendonitis. So all that fits right now, makes a lot of sense. But this second part, however, the parameters are not specified. <laughs> Hold on a minute now. So it, does that mean something to you? You know, the fact that the parameters aren't specified, does that matter? I mean, it sounds like iontophoresis with acetic acid was in the patient's plan of care already. Do, do, does the parameters in this scenario mean anything to us? So let's keep that in the back of our mind because that's, that's going to come back. I promise you that's going to come back. All right. The last statement or last sentence of the question says, which of the following is the most appropriate action of the PTA under general supervision? All right, so the PT may not be on site. The PT may be in the gener uh, geographic area, that's general supervision, you know, able to be contacted by phone, but the PT may not be directly on site to where they can be asked a question that quickly, all right? So that brings us down to our answer choices. We have, again, I'll go through these again. A, hold physical therapy treatment. B, perform iontophoresis using clinical judgment of patient tolerance. C, continue with the plan of care, but hold the use of iontophoresis. And D, continue with the plan of care with an iontophoresis dosage of 10 milliamp minutes. All right. So, so, so let, let's talk about this real quick. First answer is whole PT treatment. Now, before we really get in and dissect these answer choices, I want to draw your attention to this idea of the fact that the parameters were not specified. You have to understand something that PTAs have a major freaking role when it comes to physical therapy. They are there to carry out the plan of care, get the patient healed back to their optimal level of functioning. They are a, a major part, a critical part of our system. However, the PTA has a certain scope of practice. All right. And so in order for you to be able to dictate or determine the parameters for something like ontophoresis or Russian stem or any of those electrical stimulation units, really, you, you need to be able to assess the tissue to understand what is it that the patient actually needs. I mean, we can't just go willy nilly, just turning the intensity all the way up to 20. All right. We can't just. Uh, set forth a certain amount of acetic acid and just start, you know, putting a certain amount on the patient. No, 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 no. There is a certain uh, level of, of education that's required in order for you to understand how to assess the patient and apply the correct dosage. That is within the scope of the PT, not the PTA. It's not the PTA's fault. That's not their job. They don't do that. So the fact that the parameters were not specified, let me tell you something. 
that it's it's really putting the PTA in a situation where they have a choice to make. Do they determine the parameters, which would not be correct, or do they defer to the PTA, uh, the actual physical therapist? All right, so let's now look at our answers now that we know that information. A says hold physical therapy treatment. Now here's the deal. Why would you hold PT treatment? As a PTA, you're not gonna hold PT treatment because you can still follow the plan of care, can you not? There's still other things that you can do with your patient in order to help them improve this whole calcific tendonitis. You still follow the plan of care. So I don't want you to stop PT treatment and just wait for your iontophoresis parameters. No, that's a little overkill. I would not send your patient home because of that. Doesn't make sense. Let's go to B. B says perform iontophoresis using clinical judgment and patient tolerance. Perform iontophoresis using clinical judgment and patient tolerance. See, this goes against what I set up here, y'all. All right, this whole parameter is not being specified. See, of course, the PTA can use their clinical judgment to determine, okay, the patient's in pain, let me stop this. But it's not just about harming the patient. It's about making the patient better and doing it optimally. It's about getting the patient back as quickly as possible. All right. And so we don't just apply onto iontophoresis and wait to see if the patient gets painful with it. No, that's not the, uh, the, the right approach. So it's not going to be based on a PTA's clinical judgment because they weren't they didn't go through the level of schooling to understand when they should and should not be using these specific parameters. It's just outside their scope. And again, we don't want to base this thing on patient tolerance to me. I don't know about y'all. Y'all let me know. Y'all let me know. But to me, what it sounds like is, oh, I'm going to slap iontophoresis on you. You know, Taylor, I'm going to slap some iontophoresis on you and I'm just going to see how you feel. All right. And then I'm going to determine what intensity I use just based on how you feel. No, nah, we don't do that. Come on. that That's not physical therapy right there. OK, so let's go ahead and eliminate B. It just doesn't make sense. C, continue with the plan of care, but hold the use of iontophoresis. I like this answer. You can still continue with the plan of care. There's still other things that you can do. Maybe it's range of motion related or strengthening related, whatever. But hold the use of iontophoresis, waiting for the PT to specify the parameters. That makes the most sense. That's within the scope of the PTA. I like C so far. Doesn't mean it's the right answer, y'all. But I like it. Let's look at D. D says continue with the plan of care with an iontophoresis dosage of 10 milliamp minutes. Now, did we not just talk about this, y'all? All right, because continuing with the plan of care using the iontophoresis at the specific dosage, that would be saying that the PTA is determining the parameters, correct? All right. And so we would not want to use uh, ion, this iontophoresis dosage and the PTA should not be determining that. What you should have done with this question is looked at B and also looked at D and considered them to be pretty much the same exact answer, eliminating both of them at the same time. Our final answer here, y'all, is C, continue with the plan of care, but hold the use of iontophoresis. If you got this question correct, congratulations. If you got this question wrong, though, listen, this is something that's it's, it's a gray area in PT school. I find that even myself, I didn't 100 percent understand exactly the relationship between the PT and the PTA. It took some, you know, getting exposed to the relationship in order for me to determine these things. But I will say that when it comes down to determining what a PTA should do and what a PT should do and all that stuff, you have to look at, does the patient need to be assessed? Does the patient need to be evaluated in order for us to really determine this next step? Like, let's think about parameters for a second. Does the patient need to be assessed in order for us to determine what the correct parameter should be? Yes or no? And you should be saying, yes, I need to be able to assess the tissue and determine what type of dosage, what intensity, and so forth. And that is the reason why a PTA should not be a part of this. All right. Now, there are several different things that uh, PTAs are not supposed to do or supposed to defer to the physical therapist. And these are the, some of the most commonly missed questions on the MPTE. And that's the reason why I don't just want to stop here. I want to take you to the next level and give you an opportunity to learn the top five 
missed PT concepts that come up on the MPTE where you have to know what the PTA's responsibility is and all those concepts related to that. So if you are on the podcast right now, I want you to check your show notes, click the link in there to get your cheat sheet on the top five missed PT responsibilities, PTA responsibilities, and the most common ones missed on practice exams in the MPTE.